In this video today, I will be covering how you can create users and logins in SQL Server. Now, as a database administrator, this is one of the fundamental concepts that you have to understand. Securing your database is of utmost importance. And if you can do this as a database administrator, Trust me, you're not ready for the job. Now, this video was taken from my course on Udemy SQL Server Essential Training 2022. The link to that will be in the description of this video. So this video is broken up into two parts. First, I'll be explaining the difference between users and logins, and then I'll be going into a demo for you to understand the principles and concepts, right? And guys, if you lack confidence, if you're a new one, you're a complete beginner, and you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, I do offer that service as well. You can use the link in my description to learn more about my private coaching session. So with that said, let's get right into it. Securing your server and your databases are an important consideration for every SQL Server installation. In this lecture, we'll focus on server logins, users and rules and it's important to understand how these logins and rules at the server level affect the security of your server installation. First, let's get an understanding of what logins and users are. A login is a security entity that can be authenticated by a SQL Server or any secure system. When we create users, we need logins to connect to SQL Server. This login is required when you connect to SQL Server. This login is required when you connect to SQL Server via the SQL Server authentication mode. In SQL Server, a login and a user are different from each other. A login in SQL Server is a server level security principle, whereas a user in SQL Server is a database level security principle. You'll get a better understanding when we are doing the demo, so don't worry for now. So think of it as logins are server level, Users are database level. A login in SQL Server can be mapped to multiple databases, but a user can only be mapped to one user in each database. Logins are stored in the master database, whereas users are stored in the database that it is mapped to. So the scope of a login is for the entire server, and the scope of a user is for the database in which it was created. If the user wants to connect to the instance of a SQL Server, a login must be mapped to the user. We can grant and deny permissions inside a database to a user, not the login. In the next lecture coming up, you'll understand how all of this works. In this lecture, I will be teaching you how to create, grant privileges, alter and delete users and logins. Throughout the rest of this course, I'll be using the instance that is installed on my laptop. So connect to your instance, to create a login, expand security, right click logins, select new login. So here you have two types of login that you can create. You can create a Windows authentication. So within your organization, if you are using Active Directory, then you would select search, right, select location, and then you'll see your active directory shown here, and then you can search for that user within your domain. So it's typically in the form of domain slash user name. And then you select OK. However, I'm going to get a error here because this user doesn't exist. So the login that we want to create is one that uses SQL Server Authentication. So select SQL Server Authentication. And check in for its password policy. Specify the username. And specify the password. Then select OK. So if you expand logins, you should now be seeing the demo user. And this is my Windows account, which I'm using to connect to the server now which is a system administrator. So to connect as a SQL Server user, select Connect, Database Engine, change the authentication type from Windows Authentication to SQL Server Authentication. Specify the login, the username, and if you want, remember password, then select Connect. However, if we expand, we can see the database, but we don't have any permission to access this database. Now, let's create a user. And remember, a user is at the database level. 
So to create a user, this needs to be done at the database level. So expand the database, expand security, and if you look carefully, you'd realize that the users that are under the security tab from the server level are not at the database level. So right click on security, select new, then new user. There are several user types you can choose from. You can create a user with login, user without login, user map to a certificate, or a user map to an asymmetric key or a Windows user. So for this course, we're going to be focused on creating a user with login. So we're going to call this user demo user2. So always remember that a user can be mapped to a login. So because we have a login that already exists, which is the demo user, we can then map that login right here. So if we go browse and then select the user that we want to map, then select OK. On the own schemas tab is where you'll see the list of schemas owned by the user. On the membership tab is where you can grant permission to the user to the database. We'll cover these rules further on in this module. So for now, we just want to grant the data reader permission. So select OK. So remember previously, the demo user did not have access to the database. Now let's retry accessing the AdventureWorks database again. So I'm going to refresh, expand databases and expand AdventureWorks. And now, as you can see, I can now access the database. To rename a user, you can right click and select rename and then specify the new name. So in this case, I'm, I'm renaming it to demo user. Now, a very important thing to note here with logins and users is that when you migrate your database to another server and you recreate your user, you have to remap the user to the login or else you'll have a situation where you have an R fund user. So you'll have a user that does not map to a login. And then when you try to access a database using that login, you will not have permissions. So you'd run the alter user with login command to resolve this issue. So you specify the username and then you specify the login that you want to map the user to. To rename a login, you'll simply right click on the login name, select rename, and specify the new name that you want. To revoke permission from the login, you can select properties, select user mapping, and check the permission that you want to remove. All of these actions are done by a script. So if you select the script option here, the script will be generated that will be used to remove the permission from the user. Let's connect as a demo to user. Now if you try to access the AdventureWorks database, you shouldn't be able to see any tables within the database because the read permission has been revoked. You could also revoke the permissions at the user level by expanding security, selecting the user, selecting properties, select membership, and then removing the permissions. Then select OK when you remove the permission. To delete a user or drop a user, simply right click the user. You can do a script as to drop, right? New query window. And you'll see the script that can be used to drop the user. So if we do an execute, the user should be successfully dropped. Now let's do a refresh. And you'll realize that the user no longer exists. The last thing I want to cover in this lecture is that you can deny the login from connecting to the database engine as well as you can disable the user. To achieve this, right click the user, select properties, select status and then you can deny or disable or do both and then select OK. So if we are supposed to disconnect, now try reconnecting as the demo user too. Then you should get an error message. In the next lecture, we'll be taking a look at contained users.